Hello, so there have been a lot of discussions, a lot of videos, a lot of interviews, a lot of articles about what once human is and what it will be at release. Now, this is going to be a review based on what the game is in the closed beta free. It will definitely change over time and it will definitely be improved a lot more, but it might also be, you know, be more annoying because the developers said there will be no pay to win mechanics, but to be honest, the game screams pay to win and from what I understand and from what it looks like, the game will be free to play. And you can play from your mobile phone on the same account as your computer account. Does that make sense? No, it doesn't make sense because that means the game is programmed for mobile phones as well. And you'll see that sometimes in the clanky movement, in the lock on options, in the shooting, in the other stuff. So yeah, the problem will be that they have to run the game on mobile and computer at the same time. Probably tablets as well. Anyway, it will be a little weird. So that means... The game is split into PvP and PvE servers. To be honest, the PvE servers are a waste of time and I'll mostly be talking about the PvP servers because it's the same thing as the PvE server except it has more events, more interesting events and more stuff to do. So if you want to get the best experience, just go on a PvP server. It's the same thing as the PvE except you will sometimes be able to attack players and you will sometimes be attacked by players. Now. I will not speak about many of the mechanics because it will take me forever to detail all of the mechanics so that's why I'll break down the videos further along. So this will just be a review of the game and what it currently has in the closed beta and how it is that it will be played and you can get an idea of how the game will be. So let's break it down and again this is on the PvP server because the PvP servers will have more options and more events and more interesting stuff to do. So you create an, an account, what does that mean? Well, I created an account on a world and as you can see we have worlds over here because even though you're playing on a server it will have worlds. What does that mean? Well, this is where the phases of the season begin. In the beginning of the game, I think it's the first week, it depends again, this will probably change over time, maybe they'll make the experience you get be less and you'll have a slower time advancing through the game anyway. Or maybe one of these seasons will be, or now one of these phases will last two weeks at full list. Don't know, we'll see. In the beginning of the game you can basically just explore and some areas will be locked for you and there's not a lot of things you can do. When the second phase unlocks you can do a lot more stuff and you'll have also more events and more interesting stuff out there. And also you get the gambling for the schematics which are basically weapons you can craft, armors you can craft and improve as well. And as you progress with that, the PvP servers especially will gravitate towards having more fighting, more PvP and having bigger warbands. And this is how you'll get most of your schematics. I don't think the PvE servers will have a way to get the schematics, so that's why I don't recommend you play on them. And then you'll have the duels or the duel of legends and so on. And the last one, it doesn't really say what it has. Also, some deviants will unlock as you play the game, but we'll get into that a bit later. So, what does this mean? The first phase of the season will be, let's say, the first encounter, right? And if you complete this stuff over here, you will get more ciphers. Ciphers are the stuff you need to unlock. Basically, stuff in your base, but also crafting and some other stuff. So, for example, you can unlock stuff to build in your base or to get the resources. Advanced gear, so you can make better gear, more gear, more interesting gear. Management, more food types, more... Energy supply types, growing crops and so on, and then just building your base and having a better motorcycle, a better car, a better truck and so on, turrets, better turrets, reinforced stuff. It is going to get very, very complex. So basically as time evolves, events will change and more areas will become available and more ways to get currencies and also a lot of other resources because the game has about 10 resources that will help your character grow in combat power, but also... It's nice to collect all of them. So that's basically how the server will be like. So it's not going to be you one of those types of games where you'll be able to do everything in the first week. No, it doesn't work like that. And that's a good thing. They actually slow down the progress of the game a lot by doing this. But they don't slow it too much or in a way that affects the player. So you'll be playing on a server and that server will have worlds in the beginning. So for example, it will be server, let's say PvP server 1 and that will have 10 worlds. What does this mean? Well, the worlds don't mean much, they just mean you can access different events. You can see over here, enter the map, press X and you'll see what events will be coming next and all of the types of events you can get on this server, right? Right. But this is only for the world, specifically. 
and you can change your world to another one. What does this mean? Well, the worlds basically contain the bases and the players. So, for example, if I'm in on this server, let's say server 1, and I have a player that is over here in world 2, I cannot see him. Also, if he builds his base over there, I cannot see it because he's in another world. Changing the worlds is very, very fast. So, let's switch. And that basically means I'm in another world. Now, this is done to avoid players killing the same enemies, to avoid players making bases in the best locations. It's mainly for the PvE content made, but it also has some serious issues in PvP. That's an event over there. It's not much to do. You just go over there and complete a small challenge. Also, you'll have different events over here. So, in the beginning of the game, you had 10 worlds. But now, when Season 3 started, we have less worlds. So, that means less chances for us to do the events. Sadly, you will sometimes lose your base when you are in, let's say, world 10 and it switches off because some of the bases will be deleted and you'll need to put them in another location. My base is over there, not much to show anyway. Not much to see. So this is how they will prevent players from progressing too fast and some other things. And that's why in a lot of videos, you'll not see a lot of players on the server just because they are on another world. So bases, players and uh, basically the PvE content will be determined by what world you are on. But you can also freely switch between worlds, so it's not such a big deal. And that's why I recommend you switch to, you know, or you play on the PvP server. It's the motorcycle rules durability. And also, let me show you how it is to play the game a little bit normally, and I'll show you my base and so on. But the developers have three major things to solve and I don't think they'll solve the number one. How do you prevent people from just making big groups and just dominating the server? Biggest question. Number two. The game will definitely be paid to win, so how will they handle that? And number three, how will they keep player retention? Because it really seems like you need to know basically a lot of information about the game. Yes, he's mine. <laughs> And base building is very very good, but to be honest, I'll not even touch on base building in this video because base building has been amazing in a lot of games since Valheim made it so good. So yeah, in the beginning of the game you will need to explore a lot of locations and get the cipher points and then you can unlock more stuff that will help you gather more resources, that will help you build better equipment, that will help you manage your base and your player better, that will help you basically with your exploration and some other things because the game does well a couple of things number one it's actually very hard to have all of the healing ready and it will actually use up a lot of resources so basically everything you do in the game will use up resources and you also need to eat you'll need to drink which is not hard to do but it will waste some of your time so it's one of those games that will reward players for being very very well organized as you can see this is all you need in your base and this is actually quite an advanced base to be honest You'll need probably 50 hours of gameplay time to reach this level of development. And again, you can just build so much with it, it's so easy. For example, you press the B button and you can copy a structure. For example, you want to expand the floor, do it like that. Copy this, do it like that, copy that. It's so easy, for example, you can copy something and then destroy it, I don't know. It's amazingly well made, but like I said, there are so many games that do base building so well. You have all of the usual stuff. But some of them you'll have to unlock and that will drain your cipher points, which means you'll have to make some hard choices. Now, this is only the closed beta, so I'm not sure how hard the game will be in the full release, if players can destroy your base or how that will work. But based on what a single thing says over here, I'll, I, I'll do more videos and you'll see why. But based on what the selection over here tells me, Ultra Grenade, Grenade that deals additional damage against buildings and vehicles, I'll just say that it will be possible to invade other players' bases or other, I don't know. It seems like the game will be the same as Rose, but with a lot of other mechanics and restrictions and also bonuses and events, and the game will feel very, very, very much alive. So yeah, that will kind of be the main attraction of the game. Also, these things will create stuff, but they will create them very, very fast. For example, I want to make, let's say, tungsten. You have to eat a little bit, but only a little bit. And not only that, you can also queue it up. So the base management portion will not be so bad. It's actually one of the best games to handle base building and survival so, so well. Because you can just let everything do on its own. And everything is very fast. Again, in the beta, 
in the full release of the game it might take you let's say one hour to create this amount of ammunition again it depends so keep that in mind i'll continue to say this because i want the review of the game to be as realistic as possible and also mentioning that some things will change as well you can also basically cut down trees and mine nodes instantly if you have the advanced stuff that requires advanced material instantly destroying a tree instantly destroying a rock also the game has fishing also you will have a few ways to heal the activators which are basically going to be either slow to provide healing over time fast to heal instantly and a lot of other stuff plus ammunition types every bullet you fire you have to make ammunition for it so let's say if i make 23 with these resources i'll get 500 steel shotgun ammo again i'll not get into, de into details but you get the idea also the blueprints the blueprints or the schematics will be the main feature of the game more or less so you'll you'll have to do a lot of exploration events and farming to get all of the blueprints for example you want to unlock this pistol every gun has can have different stats or traits to them for example the joes will have the unstable bomber that does a thing this doesn't have anyone so as you can see this one is much better and will become much stronger just because this is the basic one and the basic ones will be super bad power surge yeah and the more you play the more you unlock but sadly one of the bigger problems of the game will be that you'll play with this weapon in the beginning of the game let's say and then you'll just upgrade it more and more and you'll be you'll basically be playing the same game with the same weapon for maybe 100 hours because that will not change too much dp12 i'm just showing what weapons you have available like i said some of them will have spe specific skills to them for example the icy rain has the frost vortex and not a lot of weapons will have the frost vortex some of them will have the unstable bomber as you saw they can change mix and change between the guns but most of the times a certain class of guns will have their own skills like this one will have the unstable bomber the rifles the sniper rifles but this will have the fast gunner and some other stuff as well and that's basically it so uh, the same for the armor but you actually have a lot more armor so even if the developer said they'll only sell you cosmetics well if they sell you cosmetics in terms of blueprints for the items that you can craft and unlock yeah that will be a problem a big big problem and as you can see you'll also get set bonuses from that so 10 percent max hp that's huge and the more items you have the more bonuses you get and at 4 it stops so you can basically put two more items and create another bonus set like this one the cap apparently when you have one item it reduces torso damage so as you can see you can mix and match for example you can make the heavy weapon the heavy duty set four items to get the max bonuses or maybe you just want to have three of them or maybe you just want to have the the first two of them and then you want to have this one torso damage reduction and then maybe you also want power surge in case you have a power surge weapon and then maybe you want let's say this one for shrapnel damage in case you're using a weapon with explosion explosion damage anyway you get the idea you'll be able to create some really crazy combos this is what remnant needed this is what remnant 2 should have been like here providing bonuses and then being able to apply more i don't know it just combines rust with uh, a remnant from the ashes Rem remnant is not that good with uh, death stranding i don't know it has so many elements it's just amazing the way they managed to blend all of it together and then they flushed it down the toilet because it will be a free-to-play game that will be playable on mobile and pc and sadly it's it will have a very divided player base between pve pvp pvp Ra zerg rush gaming and pvp or just i don't know i've balanced around just building and having fun together i don't know it seems like it's a drag and it's probably going to be annoying also see how we have more helmets and sometimes i i think they'll just introduce more item sets and you'll be able to have a lot more options when building your perfect loadout but sadly you need to invest a lot of resources to upgrade them because of this mechanic over here so calibration calibration means you can basically spend a lot of resources to increase the damage now as you can see if you increase the damage of a weapon it will also get two slots over here where we can choose something else so yeah it will be the same for the armor except the armor doesn't get as many upgrades so that's 10 and this is six but you also yeah it will cost you again i'm not going to resources 
But you can also go into mods and the mods will change the way you play the game, which is massive. As you can see, you have a lot of variable effects and this, these are legendary mods. And the mods themselves can be improved. So you disassemble this and you give it a stronger effect by upgrading it as well. But again, this will be so annoying. And some of them will definitely change the way the game is played because let me show you. And also they're specific to gear pieces. So these mods can only be applied to the armor. These mods can only be applied to the pants. This will really change the way you play the game because if you are rolling with a high damage build like I am with a revolver and a sniper rifle, killing two enemies will refill two bullets. So that means kill two enemies, get two bullets back. You kill one enemy with one bullet, you'll basically never need to reload, which will be a massive help. So sadly, this is what the game kind of loses me as well. So beyond all of what I said right now, this might be a bigger problem. Some people will like collecting stuff, but as you can see, some stuff will make the game super easy and super unfair. Especially in PvP, but not only in that, even in PvE, if you get something like this, it will be so much easier to play the game. Yeah, you get the idea. Also, you can see what I equipped on all of them. So, for example, this one, look at that. Look at how advanced it is. It does a lot more damage against enemies, or let's say it gives you more health. And this will actually stack up very nicely. So, if I unequip everything, I'll probably have, I don't know, 3000 health or something like that. But with everything I have on me... 9,000 HP. Uh, let me show you. How do you unequip something? Oh, well, I guess it doesn't show me. Let me unequip over there. So my health is 6, so I lost 1,200 HP just because I unequipped my armor. So as you can see, this will be a massive, massive, massive change and you will have to hunt for all of those legendary mods which are very hard to get, the materials to upgrade your guns, the schematics, because you can also upgrade the schematics. So as you can see, this one, the sniper rifle I'm using is upgraded. So as you can see, it has slightly modified stats, more crit rate, more weak spot damage, more crit damage as well. So you can also upgrade the blueprints and it's a massive headache and this is where I think all of the pay to win mechanics will come in. You might be able to buy a lot of resources, buying the schematics, buying special deviants. These are basically like Pokemons. You have a chance to catch one when defeating a boss or when you mine something or when you're in the middle of the road. And they also unlock per season and some of them will just give you materials like wood. Some of them will give you materials like copper, tung tungsten ore. And a lot of other stuff. I'm not going to the details, but basically, the more you have and the more advanced they are, you'll basically be able to get almost every resources, every resource for free, or just junk. And they also will have their own resource sometimes. For example, they'll give you stuff that will allow you to make a potion that will allow you to do something. And some of them will also be used for attacking. Some of them will also be used to improve your base because this will give more power to your are generating stuff and you can collect these items and create the potions for example this will allow you to jump higher i guess yeah i guess we can showcase that a little bit now just how crazy the game can be featherweight pounding heart also very heavier loads and the game gets crazy generally spider silk i love the boss will be shown over here or somewhere Ah, so you can only jump off the ground, but you cannot jump from... Yeah, that's actually... See, the developers know what they're doing and they're balancing stuff very well. <laughs> you can even play little games. Yeah, we can reach... That's actually super fun. So this is the type of content you can expect. Again, I'm not going to details, but... That's basically everything you need to know. And like I said, the other stuff... We covered and we, we I showed you. So now let's go into exploration. We'll do a little bit of a boss fighting exploration. Also you can go into the silos, but the silos will be more or less the same thing. I'll not explain all of the events. I'll do separate videos for that. The silos are basically locations that are mini dungeons with normal enemies and a mini boss that will give you a lot of rewards. For example, this one over here. This you can do solo or with a party. The party can go up to four. The more people that are in the party, the faster it will go and you still, gain the, you still get the same rewards. So if you just play the game with a couple of friends, you will advance through the game so much faster and just blaze through it. Of course, there are other limitations. For example, you can finish the dungeon for today 100 times, but 
to, to claim the reward, you need special items. So that means at a certain point, if you do the dungeon, let's say 100 times and you're out of that item that allows you to acquire the reward for completing it, that means you either need to buy more of those items or just stop doing the dungeon on its own. Again, I'll not go into details, but that's how it works. Over here, we are in the base, and you also have the towers to teleport to them, which is amazing because you can teleport from anywhere on the map in your base. It has a five minute cooldown, and then you can just use one of the towers to teleport, or just go to a tower and teleport somewhere else. Now, let me see. I want to show you a very nice area, not the industrial area. Yeah, this is a good one. Also, as you can see, I, I've kept my editing to minimum because if I did the game. I'll convince you to buy the game five, five times, even though the game is free to play. What do I mean by that? It's just so nice and so refreshing to have a game like this, but sadly, it will not work because of all of the things I mentioned and all of the other stuff and the business model and the player base and the, I don't know. So let's say you want to go to that location, use a teleporter over there, you teleport over there, you put your vehicle down, your motorcycle. You can also travel with a car or a truck, but those are designed for other mechanics. Mostly you want to travel with the boa, the motorcycle which gets damaged. And as you progress throughout the game, you'll be able to upgrade it. In the beginning of the game, if you crash it into a rock, that's it. You cannot use it anymore. You have to go back to your base and repair it. But right now, it can actually take a few hits. But not too many. And it also goes so much faster. And as you can see, the map will show you how to go in case you get lost or in case you don't know where to go. So follow those lines. But sadly, most of the times they'll actually drive you in a different direction altogether. But they're actually pretty well made. I mean, judging from what I saw in other games, this is one of the most well-made game I've ever seen. I think the appropriate title for this game will be an MMO. Yeah, just an MMO and... I really hope the developers don't split the player base too much. I think they should just make PvP servers and just introduce more options for the people who don't like the pvp content yeah i know it will get annoying but i just want, don't want to see the player base split because that's the fastest way to destroy a game they should just make it factionism versus faction and that's one of the things that planet side 2 did so well if you make a game that is an mmo faction versus faction that means you eliminate the need to have huge groups of people playing together at the same time which will make the game enjoyable for everyone since you can at the same time, yeah, you can also collect a lot of resources and do a lot of stuff. Okay, so how is the exploration like and why is it so fun? Basically, every location like this will have a few things for you to do. It doesn't say right now because I completed the objective. It is active only. You need to kill a few enemies, you need to loot a few chests with either gear or guns, and they might have just materials in them, they don't necessarily need to have a gun or an item or an armor piece. And then you just loot the mysterious chest, and the mysterious chest is the hardest thing to find on the map, basically this is the entire area it can spawn in. Actually it's a set position, so the chests have set positions, but the developers seem to change them between the close beta, so I believe in the ending they'll either have a dynamic spawn or they'll just be in other places, especially for the gun crate and the armor crate. And the mysterious loot will always be in the same position. We just need to get the mysterious loot in order to get the schematics for the gun or armor. Sometimes they'll even give you the full schematic set to unlock it completely, especially in the beginning of the game. And after that, you can just search for the other stuff. And if you complete all of the objectives, you'll get a huge bonus in experience and some other stuff. And that's why there are no players here, because we're split basically between four worlds right now. And you can explore the outside areas, the inside areas as well. And that's so fun. But not a lot of them. And you have basically three types of enemies. The... Basically the scavengers, which are not so dangerous, but they have guns and they will deplete your durability very fast, plus they can kill you with their bombers. The Rosetta, which are basically just modern soldiers, all with guns, very dangerous, highly capable of killing you very fast. And then you just have the zombies and the supernatural stuff, which is not so bad. Now this is a lower tier area, I shouldn't be here. But the materials you get can still be usable because you can upgrade everything. So the acid can be used even further. 
The activators are your healing items that can be... Oh wow, that zombie flew away. The activators can also be upgraded. Sadly, the content tends to be repetitious. So, after you have played about 5 hours of the game, you have basically seen... 90% of the content and you'll kind of get bored of it. Flashlight. And to be honest, now that I know how to play the game, I'm actually super super happy about it because I can finish the game very fast. You can also find recipes that will give you cooking recipes in the game that can have various bonuses. The bonuses can be very good or super good, like 10% extra HP or restoring your sanity. Sanity is not a major mechanic, you will not have any problems with sanity unless they really really crank it up and make it very very hard to... Uh, how should I put it? To mitigate. But usually sanity will not be a big problem. It just reduces your max HP as you can see. But you can also have, let's say, a food item that gives you 25% experience when mining or makes it easier for you to do something. And as you can see, some of the stuff will be really well hidden and you will have to try and find them. So some people will like this, some people will not like this. I cannot float while I jump high. Also, I have stamina, sanity, and some other stuff over here. And yeah, okay, so I saw that, so we just have to find a way to get there, okay? This is how the basic concept of the game will work. You need to find certain crates over here. There's vultures, but there are no vultures here. This is just another storage crate that will have basic materials. Also fly like this. Uh, let's go and visit the hospital a little bit because that's the creepy side and people who like the creepy side of the game a lot more. That's just another boss area. I'll not show you the dungeons or the other stuff because there's no point. They more or less look like inside bases. Very nice little area. Let's go to the hospital. Cannot enter through here. Now I'm trying to show you how the game will be played when it's released or in the next beta, I think, curious. But I think most people have made up their opinions and have seen how the game is, so there's not much to do right now. You can also enter the bosses. They have a lot of good things going for them. And to be honest, I really wish they would have made this into a single player game. Or at least made it a full PvP game, not server selection with different worlds and such. It'll just confuse players. And this can be the inside of a dungeon as well. As you can see, the game is super creepy, super dark, and to scare you. And do... There are still some issues with performance and stuff. Some spiders you can step on, but not all of them. Huh, that was a bug. And you can also come to the locations you previously visited, just in case you need, for example, from the hospital, you might need healing items and so on. You can also break your legs, and then you will need to use the bandages. It's actually a pretty nice game. And as you can see, the enemies, even though they don't really lower your HP, they will still drain your durability, which means you'll need to repair your gear and means you'll need to spend resources. Okay, enough of that. Now let's do one of the boss fights. And that's probably what most people will love about the game. Teleport without any problems, even in combat, at least for the beta. And this is what people really, really love about the game. Stuff like this. Now, let's do one of the major boss fights. The mirage I think, yeah, I was wondering. You can do most of this alone until you get to the final ones. The final two, don't try them alone. This is not for solo. And the other one, this is not for solo. So let's do one of the easier ones so you can see. Probably, yeah, uh, yeah, sure, sure. I have a quest over there. Yeah, okay. So as you can see, the map system is so good. 
these developers know what they're doing. <laughs> Hopefully they can put their science to good use. Uh, yeah, let's go over here. And let's do this one so I can show you what it is. It's not going to be a very hard boss fight just because my gear and my weapons are basically end game. I'm end game at this point. I just need to fix my mods, find better mods, upgrade the mods, and also find more schematics and create better versions of my gear. But that's going to be annoying because it literally takes hours of farming to upgrade an item to max level sometimes. Depending what, on what you have, if you have the right material or not. I broke my legs again. Okay, also, as I make more videos, I'll just put them in the description. Or no, in the comment section, so you can see how the other mechanics are. I forgot to activate the things. If you activate them, you get some resources. Anyway, that was not the point. I'll just have to do them off camera at some point, if I remember. You also have trading with other players via vending machines. I don't think you can directly trade with players. I might be wrong. But, anyway, enough of that. Shadowhound. Yeah, I guess this is one of the easier battles, but. It's also one of the more dynamic ones. Some of the fights can be more static, some of the fights can be more tricky, gimmicky. But this is also going to be more cinematic and this is what the Remnant 2 developers should have introduced like as a boss. It's sleeping. Maybe I'll fail the boss fight. It depends, because even at my current level I can still mess up and take a lot of damage. The mouth is the weak spot. Uh, the sound bug though. And yes, the bosses will have phases where they get more attacks and more stuff like that. I'm just looking. It's actually damaging me. I was looking for this door because I'll need it for something else later. Boxes are massive, even though they don't look that big right now. That was the attack I was looking for. Sadly, because of, like I said, the game being on mobile and PC, I'm having some problems sometimes with shooting or aiming. hit that attack. Good job, boss. I might get hit over here because I'm not sure how to counter this thing. Yeah, I think I'm dead. See, that's what I mean. I guess once the full version of the game will be released, this will be easier to dodge. I cannot heal again until my activator is ready. died even as it was I'm clicking three times and he doesn't want to shoot I think this is a problem related to the hey I went through the portal and every boss has different mechanics Yeah, you did this so much in them, man. Huh? 
I should switch to my other weapon. I just have to jump or something. Yeah, I don't know how. Just use an adrenaline. That's one of the things I never really mastered, how to handle that phase. So yeah, it has a lot of learning and a lot of know-how. Turn around, please. Now, this is the bugged boss. He shouldn't have a state like this, and in the full race, I doubt it will work like this. It's actually protecting it so well. See, this is how it's supposed to work. I guess I didn't really use that this mechanic because I know how to do the fight. And more or less, I still died. Don't do that. We are friends. Okay, so we did the fight in real time so you can see how hard or how easy it is. But imagine you're doing this with a lot less equipment and stuff. This is how all of the dungeons work as well, except in the dungeons you'll fight normal enemies and then you have to see... This is the controller. The resource I spoke about that you can equip or get more, more or less uh, gear. Basically this boss fight was the same as the max level dungeon in terms of rewards. This is what I'd be getting from the dungeon as well, the level 45 one. Whew. But the game is also very creepy and also I don't want to spoil too much because some people might enjoy the single player journey a lot more. Are there any secrets here? You might also get a Deviant after you finish a boss fight, but I guess it's a little more rare. This is how I got the Wolf. You can get the Wolf from this fight, but getting the Deviants is such a big task and challenge and you need to know a lot about the game in order to get them. Or I, I guess you can read the guide and then you'll be ready. And as you can see, you just have to find the best way to play the game, advance in the game and continue playing. The PvP is exactly what you expect. I'll not go into that, I'll make separate videos for it, but this is how the game will be and some people will love it, some people will hate it, but at least I think I think I managed to give a very very good uh, preview of the game and how it will be. Now the only thing that remains, like I said, is those three things. How will the developers fix the pay to win mechanic, how will the developers fix the Zerg Rush mechanic being the best, and of course the server issue with people playing on PvP, PvE and also a lot of other stuff, I don't know, it's a lot of stuff to work through. In the story mode you have a lot of story elements and a lot of cutscenes and a lot of other stuff. When you get a ripple was detected in space time, that means a player left you a message. You can write a message like it's, guess what, Dark Souls, write a message. And you need to get some views because that's one of the seasonal <laughs> seasonal missions. The loot will also respawn so you can collect it once once it's ready, but I don't really need any of this stuff right now. Uh, there is only one thing I need to show you and that is the bases. And as you progress throughout the game the people or the NPCs will move from one place to the other. So you're going to a new area, the same NPCs, but new missions and new stuff. And the easiest way to do it is just go back home and then teleport into one of the bases. Now this is the biggest one and I don't really like it to be honest. I guess grey water is one of the more cozy ones and I'll show you what you can buy with water resources and this will kind of open 
the final step that I wanted to show you, which is the MMO aspects where you have a lot of currencies and a lot of ways to improve your character, which just means more grinding and more RNG loot and more luck and more bad luck. I guess it depends on how lucky you are or how unlucky you can get. I guess you can also use our motorcycle over here. And this... This is where things get... Wow, I really love this high jump. Commissions. You will also have some weekly missions you can do for controllers and some other stuff. But as you can see, everything is locked for now. This guy will save you, will sell you some other stuff. The interesting part over here is that you can buy some of these with some of these resources, which is the hardest resource to get in the game because you can use it to unlock schematics. But you can also buy a lot of stuff for your base as well. I recommend you buy a bed. Buying the bed will make you rest so much faster. Also, accessories for gun categories. Because there is also that mechanic in game, but to be honest, it doesn't seem really fleshed out. I mean, yeah, you get more range or more stability or more accuracy, but you really need it. Not really. Probably it will be even more important for automatics and such, but I guess it doesn't really matter that much since you can buy them with this stuff over here. It changes. Yeah, I forgot to show you this. You can aim in first person or third person. Click and hold. Click once. But I guess that's not such a big deal because many people not really want one or the other. Let's talk a lot to the again, no dialogue for now, but you can talk a lot to them. This is the main currency of the game, which is the energy points. And even if you don't like crafting, even if you don't like going to gather materials you can just buy some of this stuff which is limited by we daily stuff weekly limit but as you can see you can get enough healing items you can get enough items to basically allow you to play the game without even farming but that's much later into the game so this is why i don't understand why the developers didn't simply let you play the game as a survival game or as another thing i don't know i don't know could have been an amazing one you can also buy anything you need from here and as you can see from this event, you can buy the Stardust, Stardust stores, but it's super expensive. You can also buy some of the other stuff. You also saw some of the mods. I think these are mods. Yeah. These are legendary mods, I think. As refurbished, but to be honest, you don't really need to buy them. And most of the times, you'll just need to use your outlet to buy this stuff over here which is the really expensive and the thing you need you do have a limit for the season so that means again this is how i hope the developers will do it but i hope they limit them they will limit them a lot more so that people who don't play in a big rush group don't have problems with that so you can also sell here stuff that you don't really want or need and some of the stuff you'll sell will be super valuable so that as you can see it basically means that you can trade a lot of the settlements to get a lot of cool stuff and yeah mostly cosmetics it will have a lot of limits it will depend on where you are in your base and such uh, i think i showed everything there are a few things i forgot to show you but that's basically the game See you next time also uh, I want to show you another interesting thing about the game. No gear over here. Unequip it. You're always wearing a gas mask, which is kind of funny and weird. Because you can basically put down your gear and just look at your character like that. But you can also do another thing that I like a lot. Which is the cosmetic part, which means you can replace... How... It's, what was it called? It? Transmogging. I don't know what it's called. I don't play that many MMOs. Uh, to be honest, I don't think it looks better than what I previously had. Unequip it. Then, yeah. This is one of the armors you can unlock from an event. 
I don't really like the skirt part because it moves very weird. I don't really like the boots either. Huh. Anyway. I don't really like that. Yeah, I hope they make some better skins because again, it depends on where you live in the world. And, uh, and this is cool for Chinese players, but I don't really care the portion of it. Especially the way it flings around like that. Let's actually see if we can make something more interesting. Now we cannot because we don't have other stuff. But anyway, we'll have a lot of other charms. I showed you some of the deviations and some of the other stuff. And you can also look very, very cool like this, like one of the NPCs. Probably people like this one, which is kind of like the detective. I really hope they'd manage to keep a very, very dark tone to the game because some of this stuff is amazing. Anyway, that's everything. I don't know. I guess I should show you some of the messages as well. What? Oh, no, don't! Oh, what, what did I read? Oh... Don't read everything you have in this game. I want more likes from you. And that's that will be one of the seasonal events. So let me show you how this works. Season goals. You can get more ciphers and more star chromes that you'll need to basically gamble for the schematics. I didn't show you that because you just press a button if you have the resources for it and that's about it. And the more of this stuff you get, the more you, faster you unlock, the faster you unlock this stuff, and then you will also have a season shop. Which I, again, I don't think everything will be cosmetic based because from what I showed you over here, you'll have so many things to buy with stuff like this, even even the emotions or not emotion, the emote stuff. So be careful. Bye.